Hi everyone, thanks for having me here today. This is a short paper, so please do feel free to reach out to me via email or via Twitter with your questions and comments. I'd like to give a special quick shout out to Ryan Thompson for all of his hard work in getting NACVIGUM online this year. To Ryan, Dana Plank, and Julianne Grasso for their insights into this work and for streaming this game last year on our Thursday night Twitch stream. And also to Dana for her help with transcriptions. Fazanadu, or as little Karen thought, Faxanadu, was released by Hudson Soft in 1987. It was very well received, ranking number six in Nintendo Power's top 30 games, but was soon forgotten until its port to the Wii Virtual Console in 2010. Its soundtrack was composed by June Chikuma, best known for her work for the Bomberman series. Any of you watching this who knows me in a video game music sort of way knows how very much I love this game and its soundtrack. And yes, folks at home, I am wearing the pants. So, a 10-minute lightning talk is but a sneak preview to the in-depth study I'm currently constructing on this game. This is sort of a highlights reel, focusing on some of what I find to be so interesting and compelling in Chikuma's soundtrack. A quick orientation in history. Fazanadu was released in 1987, right after and alongside some of the most influential games in third-gen video game history with regard to both game design and musical approach. Many fans and scholars point to Koji Kondo's 1985 soundtrack for Super Mario Bros. as a tipping point in which music began to be so tightly linked to the visuals, emotions, narrative, and physicality of the game. And the musical choices made in these games would eventually solidify into musical expectations, especially for RPGs. I'll single out Ko Koichi Sugiyama's score for Dragon Warrior, which first utilized what music critic Kevin Gann calls the eight melodies template that almost every future RPG soundtrack would follow. By Fazanadu's release, Chikuma had already composed the soundtrack for Hudson Soft's first big smash, Bomberman, in 1985, and followed it up with Adventure Island the next year. But neither of those scores has the depth or the complexity that she brings to Fazanadu. In large part, this has to do with the game's scope and structure. Fazanadu's an action RPG in which the nameless protagonist sets off on a quest through the world tree to rid the kingdom of dwarves. The kingdom is not divided up into a pat overworld and dungeon, but rather into different sections of the world tree. Kingdom, buttress, trunk, branches, and finally the dwarven castle. Each of these areas has its own towns, shops, temples, and dungeons. In many ways, Chikuma follows the Eight Melodies model. There are title and end themes, a theme for towns, for dungeons, for the final dungeon, and boss battles. But Fazanadu, like Legend of Zelda, adds a password menu theme since players can save their progress. There's a separate throne room theme. And the tracks that play in shops and here in the Guru's Temple are substantial enough to count as distinct themes. Lastly, and perhaps most impressively, whereas Zelda and Dragon Warrior have but one overworld theme, Fazanadu has four, a separate theme for each of the main areas. From a statistical point of view, the sheer amount of music featured in Fazanadu might surprise you. Whereas the soundtracks for Super Mario and The Legend of Zelda both, both clock in at just under three minutes, and that for Dragon Warrior at just over three and a half minutes, the soundtrack for Fazanadu is almost 11 minutes long. While my study will treat the entire soundtrack, for the remainder of this talk, I will concentrate on the town, the overworld, and the dungeon themes. Even in these early stages of the development of musical RPG tropes, town themes, such as those heard in Dragon Warrior, Zelda II, and Final Fantasy, are calm, pastoral, and singable. They mark towns as safe havens, and they usually consist of one short looping melodic segment. An example is the 12 measure long town theme from Dragon Warrior. Fazanadu's towns also offer shopping, healing, and safety, but Chikuma's angular, syncopated, and very energetic town theme creates a very different vibe. Additionally, the theme is constructed in a dissimilar fashion. 
It has three separate staggered layers that combine together to form one 32-bar macro loop. As this diagram hopefully shows, the noise channel is totally comprised of a two-bar short repeating phrase, while the triangle channel consists of four-bar phrases, on top of which all will be layered the pulse channel's repeating melodies. Let's listen. Chikuma uses this layered looping approach whereby new melodic or contrapuntal voices are stacked on top of repeated material to good effect in several of the overworld themes as well. For example, in Land of Mist, she starts with the layered material, an eerie four-note motif offset by a sixteenth note between the two pulse channels to produce a slight echo effect. As this material repeats, the tri triangle channel's melody will be stacked over top before all voices move to new material in the B and C sections. bar macro loop that's created leaves out that initial four bar intro every time it repeats. But as the entire theme begins again every time you re-enter the area, you will end up hearing that intro quite frequently. I'd also like to point out here another interesting facet of Chikuma's scoring. Her placement of the melody prominently in the upper ranges of the triangle channel, while the ostinatos in the pulse channel at the beginning are pushed further down in their range. When these parts invert in the B and C sections, the timbral differences are a little startling and can add to the overall sense of unease that this track creates. Not only is this layered looping approach a creative way of maintaining musical interest and thus alleviating listener fatigue, it's also a creative way of working around the limited data storage of the NES console since small bits of musical material are reused throughout each of these tracks. I'd like to conclude with Chikuma's two dungeon themes. The theme heard in the final dungeon, seen on the right, is identical in form and length to the theme that's heard in every other dungeon. Because interestingly, what Chikuma has done is to take the regular dungeon theme, transpose it, and make noticeable tweaks to melodic contour and rhythmic activity. The main dungeon theme is active, edgy, and syncopated, bright and high in range. In comparison, the final dungeon theme is much lower in range, to the point where the triangle channel is more a visceral rumble now than an aural presence, and the tweaks she's made to the by now quite familiar theme can be very destabilizing to the player's confidence and concentration in navigating through this final difficult maze. Let's listen to them both now.
boss's theme is the same for that for all the other boss battles. Moreover, immediately upon winning, you're magically transported back to the king's throne room, and then you leave the kingdom to the sounds of the ending theme, a variant on the title theme. As a result, the entire soundtrack reads like a giant modified arch form, and it's unified on a much deeper level. In my continued work on this soundtrack, I plan to tackle issues of modality and chromaticism, to continue to unpack range, timbre, form and structure, 8-bit compositional techniques, all in order to present Shikuma's score for Fazanadu as a fascinating case study for third-gen soundtracks in their own right, and Shikuma herself as an underrated composer who both aligns with and pivots away from sonic expectations for action RPGs just as they were beginning to coalesce. Thank you, I look forward to your questions, and remember, don't have negative thoughts, remember your mantra, 